For a while now, I've wanted to challenge myself to make something using really cheap filmmaking equipment because we've all heard that it doesn't matter what kind of camera we use, but most of the people who say that are already using pro-level gear. So here's what I'm gonna be using. The camera is the lovely JVC MS110. At five years old, it's not the freshest, but it has standard definition recording and it can zoom really far. And to go with that, we've got one of these classic cheapo tripods. For sound, I'll start with this Tascam recorder and plug in some cheap headphones. For the microphone, we'll use this little one from Rode. It comes with a windshield so we can use it outside. Let's connect that to an extension cable and the cable to the recorder. Finish it up with a painter's pole, which is slightly cheaper than a professional boom pole, and I'm just gonna tape the microphone to the end. By the way, I purposefully spent more on sound than visuals because audio is where we'll really notice the difference. So that's it for equipment. No lighting gear, no drones, and we'll be using free software as well. More on that later. So we've saved some money on the equipment, but that doesn't mean that I can have a five week shoot with 30 actors across 12 locations. Doing that would cost thousands just to feed that many people. So it makes much more sense to write something really short that we can film in one or two days with just a few actors on a location that we can use for free. Now, that might sound like a real limitation, but there's still so much we can do within that. Writing the script, for example, doesn't cost anything. Neither does walking around to find the perfect location or borrowing props and costumes, drawing storyboards, we can do all of that stuff and the only thing it's gonna cost us is our time. But eventually we have to pick a day to film and once that decision is made, things tend to get a little bit crazy. I personally had about four days to finish writing the script, to borrow some stuff for the shoot, to buy some cheap stuff for the shoot, and to find actors, to find locations, and to plan out the storyboards. Now I could have easily spent all of that time just watching actors show reels and deciding who to cast and then getting in touch with actors, going back and forth, giving them all the details. So I really would recommend that if you wanna be smart about this, give yourself more time than I had. Give yourself plenty of time to plan things and if you can find someone to collaborate with, that will make it so much easier. So after the four days, I still have the classic pre-shoot nerves thinking, is the concept gonna be good enough? Is the script anywhere near good enough? And why did I leave everything until the last minute? So then I get a text at 10 p.m. the night before the shoot from one of the actors. Won't be able to make it tomorrow because my car is broken down in Yorkshire. Great, so I'm emailing a few actors, but it's too late, we'll just have to work around it. And then the next morning on the day of the shoot, another one of our actors doesn't show up. So we are two actors down and I have to just kind of rejig the script in my head, try and come up with something because we really need to start shooting. Now, aside from that, the shoot went fairly smoothly. We just had some interruptions from buses and trains at regular intervals, but that gave us something to joke about. Noisiest bike in the world. <laughs> Sometimes we'd get to the end of a take and I knew I had some feedback for the actors, but I'd completely forgotten it because I just had so many other things going through my mind. But the cheap equipment was serving us well. The only problem was that I couldn't get hold of an extra battery for the camera. So when it shut down, we had to find a cafe to charge it up. Time for a lunch break, I guess. From there, we had to think really carefully about which shots were most important, knowing that the camera could switch off at any moment and it was starting to get dark. Aside from the battery, using cheap equipment wasn't really a problem. Now sure, the tripod couldn't pan smoothly, but I ended up just holding it and the weight of the tripod balanced it out to give us some pretty smooth shots. I took the camera out of automatic mode so I could control the exposure and I'm pretty pleased with how the visuals turned out, especially when we could use the bridge as a dark background or to block the light coming from one side, like in this shot. So as usual, if you've found a good location with good light, it'll look pretty good through any camera. Our sound setup meant we could listen to the audio to check for any problems while getting the mic nice and close to the dialogue, which is key. So by this point, I'd completely lost track of the shot list that I'd planned out, but I was pretty confident that I'd got everything I needed as far as coverage goes, but I had to be because the camera had died and it was getting really dark. So the evening after the shoot, I kept thinking about all the things that hadn't worked out as I'd hoped and I actually was too scared to look at the footage until late the next day. 
yeah. But I did eventually move on to editing with the free software HipFilm Express, not sponsored. And the thing to remember about editing software is that unless you're planning to use complex CGI characters and lots of fancy effects, it really doesn't matter what kind of software you use. DaVinci Resolve is a good option, but for this project, I used the basic version of HipFilm, which is free and it does everything we need it to do. The simple truth is that any editing software can handle the essential parts of editing, which are changing the length and the order of the shots. Simple as that. We can even do some basic color grading using the levels to add some contrast and then increasing the saturation slightly. I think that improved things for this shot. Next, we can go through and add some sound effects that we recorded separately, whether it's footsteps or anything else that makes a noise. Taking the time to do this really makes things feel three-dimensional. So then there's the music. Now, on a shoestring budget, it's really hard to find good music that fits. And that's where Filmstro comes in. They've sponsored this video and they offer single licenses that are fully customizable for $6. Now, the best way to see what Filmstro can do is just to play around with the demo film. Watch this. So I imported my short film, looked through the themes to choose one, and then started shaping it to fit what's happening on screen. In this case, that meant keeping the momentum quite low most of the time. So you can try it for free, play around with it, and like I said, you can get individual themes, which is what I did for this project, but they also have subscriptions if you want unlimited use. But all the info, including a 20% discount, is in the description. So when I started this project, I was challenging myself to use inexpensive equipment and software, but really that wasn't that difficult. The real challenge was trying to sort out all the logistics at the last minute, trying to do so many different jobs by myself and trying to tell a story in a really short time frame. So I'll upload the short film next week, but in the meantime, I challenge you to make something that seems impossible whether it's making a short film with really, really cheap gear or just making something on a really, really tight deadline or something more ambitious than you've ever made before. I challenge you to go out there and do something that you really don't think you can do because as difficult as it is and as it really isn't even that much fun, it's the kind of thing that you look back on and you go, wow, I learned so much from doing that. My name's Simon Cade, this has been DSLR Guide, and I'll see you next week.